Former President of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt, once remarked, In the long run, the most unpleasant of truths is a safer companion than the most pleasant of falsehoods. Now, this is a warning against hypocrisy that was echoed by the 19th century novelist Nathaniel Hawthorne, who said no man for any considerable period can wear one face to himself and yet another to the multitude without finally getting bewildered as to which may be the true. Now, it brings me no joy to report this, but on three separate major topics now, I have caught the governor of the state of Florida in hypocrisy, major hypocrisy. Now, I know a lot of you are a fan of this guy. A lot of people are. A lot of Floridians think that he's done some great things, and he has, as has our legislature. One thing I have tried to hammer on, especially at the live events where we cover the governor, is that a lot of what he's doing is just facilitating the will of our legislature. It's not coming from him. He's the guy on point, of course, and he's been a good ally heretofore. However, to speak the truth, we must speak all of the truth. Now, what's the three big topics? Energy, guns, and the gay agenda. Those three things, he has specifically come out now and shown an unbelievable level of hypocrisy. Let's start with energy, because it applies to everybody. We'll deal with Nikki Freed in a minute. If she sees this, she could give this guy a run for his money. He has begun repeating the Trump lie that the Keystone XL pipeline would have somehow stopped gas prices from going to where they're at. It's ridiculously oversimplified and just provably false. And also there's a level of hypocrisy as well that I'd like to point out. Now, what am I talking about? Keystone XL Pipeline. See, there was the first phase of it that started in Canada, Socialist Canada, and went down through the Dakotas to Steel City and then over to Illinois. Phase two, continued Steel City down to Oklahoma. Phase three, Alpha, Cushing, Oklahoma to Port Arthur. Phase three, Bravo, connected Houston to the pipeline. Phase four is what they were talking about where they were going to replace this first section with a larger pipe and a more direct route. Now, here's the problem with this. This pipeline, when canceled, was only 8% done. It wasn't slated, and this is being very, very uh, generous, to be done until late 2024, possibly 2025, before one drop entered this country. But here's the bigger argument. Here's the hypocritical argument. This isn't American produced energy. This is Canadian oil that they were mixing U.S. oil with, with a stop here at Baker. This was imported crude oil from Canada. Now, wait a minute. Canada? You mean socialist Canada? dictatorial, tyrannical Canada run by this guy, Justin Trudeau, level of admiration I actually have for China because of their basic dictatorship is allowing them to actually turn their economy around on a dime. So let me get this straight. And the governor's talked about, oh, uh, Biden, or Brandon, he shut down the Keystone XL pipeline. And he's gone after U.S. energy. And that's why gas is so hot. High- Nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. And even if it did, it's imported oil from Canada while out of the same mouth, out of the other side, he's like, oh, we can't import oil from socialist dictators like Nicolas Maduro. Wait a minute. It's okay to import oil from socialist dictators like Justin Trudeau, but not Nicolas Maduro. Now, Trudeau's actually worse. And this brings me to my second topic. Trudeau's gun ban sparks panic among U.S. conservatives. Trudeau introduced new legislation on money that would put a national freeze on the ownership of all handguns 
and has already his bands on more than 1,500 types of <clears throat> assault style firearms. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. Where the Keystone Pipeline was pumping oil from, by the way. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you ready for this? Florida's red flag law, championed by Republicans, is taking guns from thousands of people. Many people have come to my comments and said, hey, will you comment on this? Sure will. I sure will. Believe it or not, Grady Judd, the sheriff of Polk County, is all for these red flag laws that take guns away from thousands and thousands of people. Now, where's the hypocrisy with the governor? Well, the governor said, had he been in charge when Rick Scott signed these, now remember, these red flag laws that came into being in Florida came in under Rick Scott back in 2018, prior to when DeSantis was in the governor's mansion. These were supported by Donald Trump. Take the guns first, due process second. Now, DeSantis says he would have vetoed them, these these red flag laws, laws that Grady Judd supports. And that's actually down here. Let me see if I can get that here. Um, it's called a risk protection order. Uh, Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut. The Florida law is a good law, and it's a signal of what's possible. And is that in this article? Now, of course, the NRA is against it. State Representative Jared Moskowitz, a Democrat, um, for it. The NRA uh, docked the scorecards of anyone who voted for the bill. And where is it? In an interview with CNN, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd defended Florida's red flag law against Crenshaw's characterization. Polk is a conservative county between Tampa and Orlando that former President Donald Trump won by 14 points. It is also the county that has issued more risk protection orders than any other in the state. So Grady Judd has enforced the red flag laws that seize guns from people more than any other sheriff. So, what side of that are you really on, Governor? Are you standing with Grady Judd, or are you standing against Grady Judd? Now, here's the real hypocrisy. This is Florida Maquis Channel, 11-2-2018. Government issues arms to citizen militias. Patriots love their country, ready to defend. I want you to watch this. This is from Venezuela. When they thought it was an eventuality that the U.S. was going to invade... And overthrow their country. You can find this at about the 11 minute mark of that video on the Florida Maquis channel. And these are normal civilians lined up, getting issued. Military basic issue. A lot of guys out there in my audience, you remember this day in the military? Remember when you got your first initial issue? Of gear, got your Kevlar, looks like you got a basic pack, we're going to speed this up just a little bit, and as you can see, they get down here to the end, they got their entrenching tool, got a blanket, and there you go, there's your weapon, ma'am. Go ahead and sign right there. There's your weapon, ma'am. The government of Venezuela handing out weapons to its citizens. Oh, oh, but they're the evil dictatorship, aren't they? They're the evil ones. They're the bad ones. Boo, no. We can't we can't import oil from Venezuela, even though, even though, oh, by the way, here's a piece of trivia for you. Guess who the first non-NATO country was in the world to get the F-16 given to them by 
that evil, terrible, horrible socialist Ronald Reagan. Yeah, that's right, Venezuela. See, they were our allies when I was in the military. Venezuela was our allies. They were socialists, and they sold oil, and that's how they financed their government. It's that simple. They pumped oil out of the ground. They had a corporation set up, run by the government, called PDVSA. They sold that oil, the money they got from that oil. That's what they paid for government with, no income taxes. See, that was the evil, terrible, horrible socialism that big oil couldn't have you believing in. Couldn't have you getting that idea of what goes on up in Alaska every day. So there's two. Guns and oil. Now, what's the final piece of the puzzle here? Let me see if I can find it. The gay agenda. The governor makes this big, huge, stinking deal about not wanting kids to get groomed by teachers to their agenda, their social agenda, their sexual agenda, whatever it is. But then he agrees to sit down and be interviewed by Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin. A guy who, in California, purchased, purchased two kids. Surrogacy. Gay surrogacy. Bought baby so he could pretend to be a daddy. See, he wants to pretend to be a daddy, and so does his other partner named Dave. So my question is, again, Governor, what's to stop someone from that group, the gay agenda, from starting a GoFundMe, starting up a foster home with those funds, raising a bunch of money from the, the woke left, the woke liberal left that wants to see the trans agenda pushed. They start a GoFundMe. They get millions of dollars. They open up foster homes all over this country where they basically purchase the kids and then they groom them. What's to stop that? And why are you getting, giving these guys time? Why are you being interviewed? Oh, because why? He doesn't doesn't like the fact that things are more expensive in California now? And that's why he's moving to Florida? Or was it that because he's uh, decided to spout so many of Trump's conservative lines that he's no longer friends with all of his liberal buddies in California and now he wants to come to Florida? Well, they'll pay more attention to him. You see, three strikes, Governor. Three strikes. Repeating Trump's lies on energy. A total hypocrite when it comes to the whole gun agenda and what they want to do with that. And now with the gay agenda as well. That's three different things. Three different things. You have forgotten, sir, who brought you to the dance, so to speak. It was conservative Christians. And if you continue this, if you continue this, there are a lot of people that are going to walk away. An election night might not go like you think it's going to. And it'll be the story of perhaps the millennia, <laughs> truly. The political story, at least of the century, for sure. Of how someone could have risen so high and been so far ahead in the polls, seeming so undefeatable, and only in a matter of months have everything fall apart because of what? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Being unable to see what's really happening around him. That's just the case. It brings me no joy, but it's the reality. The most unpleasant of truths is a safer companion than a pleasant falsehood. I'll leave it there. Join us over on Patreon, Psychological Operations 101. Only one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable, 90 days. Love to have you there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.